Example 1 here on outliers and interquartile range is taking a look at the interquartile range. Now simply here we've been given a data set and all we have to do is find the interquartile range. Now remember for the interquartile range here we need to calculate Q1, the lower quartile and Q3, the upper quartile. So we acquire Q1 here and Q3. Now to work out Q1 here we simply take N, that's the number of data points here, and in this example here, that's 11. So we're going to do for Q1 here, this is going to be 11 divided by 4. So we always divide it by 4. And in this case, 11 divided by 4 gives us 2.75. And what we do is we round this up. This tells us what position Q1 is in. Okay. So we round this up here, which would give us the third position. Okay. And the third position here, again, if we count up from 1, so this is the first position, second position, third position here. So we know Q1 here is equal to 5. Okay, And just to note here, in this example, this has been placed from smallest to largest, or the data set has been placed from smallest to largest. Just make sure that's the case in any examples that you're calculating. So we've got Q1. Let's calculate Q3 now. So Q3 here. This is equal now to 11 over 4 times by 3. So we do 11 divided by 4, and we times it by 3. Okay, And in this case, 11 over 4 times by 3 gives us 8.25. Okay, And remember here, we always round up. Okay, So in that case, this would be in the ninth position. So this is the ninth position here. So this is the ninth position. And in that case, again, if we count from the first one, so that's the third one, fourth, fifth, sixth, seven, eight, nine. So it's seven here. Okay, so that gives us seven for Q3 here. Okay, so the upper quartile is seven. And if we want the interquartile range, so the IQR, well, remember, we simply calculate this here, doing Q3, the upper quartile minus the lower quartile. Okay, so in that case, that's simply seven minus five, and that gives us two there for the interquartile range for example one. Example two here takes a look at outliers. Now here again we've been given a data set and this is in order so that's great we can work straight away with this data set. Now we're told a data point is said to be an outlier if it is more than 1.5 times the interquartile range above the third quartile or below the first quartile. Now what we want to simply do here is identify any outliers from this data set. So first, let's calculate Q1 and Q3 here. So our lower quartile and our upper quartile. Or in other words, the first quartile and the third quartile. So for my first quartile here, Q1, that's simply going to be 7, the number of data points here, divided by 4. Okay, And 7 divided by 4 gives us 1.75 there. Now remember, this is only the position, and we always round this up. So in this case, this is the second position. So the second position, and in that case, going across here to our second position, we know Q1 is 34. Okay. So now, if we want the third quartile or the upper quartile here, Q3, again, we just do the same here, but we times this by 3. So this is 7 over 4 times by 3. And in that case, for Q3 here, the position we obtain here now, that would give us 5.25 there. Okay, and remember, we always round this value up. So this is the sixth position here. Okay, so that's the sixth position. And if we check what the sixth position is, so that's the second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth. So we have team 42 for Q3. Okay, so here now, what we know is that this is an outlier if it is more than 1.5 times the interquartile range above Q3 or below Q1. So first let's do 1.5 here times the interquartile range. So the IQR, remember that's Q3, the third quartile, minus Q1, the first quartile here. So in that case we do 42 minus 34, and that simply gives us 8 here. Okay, So the IQR is 8. So therefore, what we're going to do here now is do 1.5 times the interquartile range. So 1.5 times the IQR simply gives us 1.5 times 8, which gives us 12. Okay. 
example. So in that case now we can calculate the boundaries for the outliers. So in that case, if we take the first quartile here, Q1, and subtract 12 from it, so it's below the first quartile here, so therefore the boundaries here now, Well, in that case, like we just said, that that's going to be 34 minus 12, which gives us 22. So that's my lower boundary. Let's abbreviate that as LB. And then for my upper boundary here, we're above the third quartile. So that's going to be Q3, 42, plus this value here of 12, which would give us 54 there. Okay, and that's my upper bound. And we'll abbreviate that as UB. So in that case, all we need to do now is simply take a look at our data set to identify any outliers. So first checking for any values below my lower boundary here. Well, in that case, we're looking for any values less than 22. And in that case, we can see straight away, this 21 here. So let's highlight this in a different color. This 21 must be an outlier. So therefore, 21 is an outlier. And again, what we need to do now is take a look at the upper boundary here, okay, my upper bound. So in that case, any values larger than 54 would be also considered an outlier. But in that case, as 44 is the largest data point here, we can see we have no further outliers, okay. So 21 is an outlier, and it's the only outlier there, okay. So therefore, that gives us the solution to example 2 on outliers.